Good afternoon, kids. And welcome to the next edition of Mischievous Dancing with the Decimals. Uh, today we're going to look at multiplying decimals, which we've done already in class, but I just wanted you to have this video as a review if you needed it. Um, and we're going to talk about the different algorithms for multiplying decimals, which really is when it gets down to it, only one algorithm, but just a different way to look at the same algorithm. So if we are multiplying two decimals, let's say we're multiplying 4.7 times 22.0. Okay. Um, from the work that we have done in class and on different problems, we know that the first step for our algorithm is always to multiply without the decimal points. Because since we're multiplying, right? Since we are multiplying, these digits need to get multiplied by these digits. 4 and 7 need to get multiplied by 2, 2, 0, and 2. And it's much easier to do that without um, those decimal points in there. Okay, we'll talk in a little bit why we don't need to line the decimal points up. So let's look at how we multiply 4.7 times 22, 02. Okay? So in general, principle says that you put your bigger number on top. Now you don't have to do this. Um, but it generally helps with organization a little bit. Now I'm going to multiply by 47. Okay. What I'm essentially doing here when I do my multiplication is I'm going to multiply 2202 by 7 first, and then I'm going to multiply 2202 by 40, because 7 and 40 make 47. So when I do multiplication here, I'm going to multiply everything by 7 first, and then I'm going to add, multiply by 40. So let's uh, look at what happens, and then I add them together. So let's look at what happens. So I start with 2202 times 7. And say, okay, well, 2 times 7 is 14. I'm going to carry a 1. 7 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 7 is 14 again. Carry a 1. 7 times 2 is 14. And then I have to add that extra 1 in, and so I've got 15. Right? <clughs> so that is my 2207. Uh, 2202 times 7, as we said over here, 15414. Okay? Now I'm going to multiply my 2202 by 40. Since you're multiplying by 40, you know that in that last place, and 40 is a power of 10, you know in that last place for this multiplication, you're going to end up with a 0. Okay? Because 0 times 2 is 0. So <clears throat> we can automatically put that 0 there, and that's why we automatically put that 0 there as a placeholder. Now that we've taken care of the zero, we can focus on just multiplying 2202 by 4. Because when we add the zero, that's multiplying it by 40. So 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. And I get 8808. So this would be 8808. Oh, 88,080, which makes sense as an answer. So now I can add together 4, 9, 4, 13, carry 1, and 10. So I get 1, 0, 3, 4, 9, 4. So I know that 47 times 2002, sorry, not 2002, 2202 is, contains the digits 1, 0, 3, 4, I know that 4.7 times 2202, if I do the straight multiplication, I end up with 103494. Now I have to put in my decimal places back in. And this is where you have a few options of what to do. First, you can estimate. Well, 4.7 is awfully close to 5. 22 is awfully close to 20. 5 times 20 is 100. So I know my answer is going to be near 100. Where do I put my decimal point then? Right at the right after the 3, giving me 103.494, which is very close to 100. So that's option number one. And of, often the easiest option, especially when you're dealing with numbers that are larger than one whole. So we've got 4.7 here and 22. Both of those are larger than one whole. So estimation is often your best bet when you are dealing with numbers larger than one whole. 
So other options, okay? Count the decimal points, right? Everybody says, oh, count the decimal points, count the decimal points. Counting the decimal points is fine as long as you know why you are doing that, right? So the counting the decimal points, you count all the spaces to the right of the decimal point. So here we have one, two spaces. Here we have one space that gives us a total of three spaces. And now, of course, I cannot remember what my number was, 47 times, 47 times 2202, right, sorry, 103494, oh, had to use a calculator there for a second. So I've got my two, one, two decimal places here, one decimal point there, and that means I have to put three back in, and lo and behold, we end up right at 103.494 again. So we've gotten to the same answer. Now, why does this method of counting the decimal points work? Well, it has to do with the fractions that we have here, right? If I rewrote these numbers as fractions, this would be 4 and 7 tenths, and this would be 22 and 2 one hundredths, okay? So what if I wrote those as improper fractions? Well, that would be 47 tenths times... 2200 plus 2, 2202 over 100. I already know what 47 times 2202 two, two, is. It's 103494. And what do I end up in my denominator? 10 times 100. Well, what is that? That is 1000. So I get 103,494 thousandths, okay? Which means that my last digit here needs to end up in the thousands place. If it's going to end up in the thousands place, then my decimal point needs to go right here because now I have 494 thousandths. So when we count the decimal points, that's really what we're counting is the denominators, right? Four and seven tenths or 4.7, right, is 47 tenths. It's got a denominator of tenths. Here we've got 22 and 2 one hundredths. So we got denominator of hundredths. When we multiply together, we create our new denominator. And now we have thousandths, right? If you think about this, hundredths, tenths, what's hundredths times tenths? It's thousandths. So we, that's what, that is why we can count the decimal spaces. But if you don't like counting the decimal spaces, you're more than welcome. This is kind of like algorithm number three. Think about it in terms of fractions. Well, I'm going to end up with tenths times a hundredths. That gives me thousands. I know my answer needs to end in the thousands place. So that's a quick look at how we multiply decimals in some ways that we think about um, putting the decimal point back in. Remember, we have the estimation way, right? Counting decimal points or thinking about it as fractions. One final way that I actually think is really important as well is what happens, we know we take the decimal points out, right? Well, what have we done when we did that? We essentially multiplied 4.7 here by 10, okay? So 47 is 4.7 times 10, and 2202 is 22.02 .02 times 100. Because we moved this decimal place once, which is a factor of times 10. We moved this decimal place twice, which is a factor of 100. So because of the, and those two numbers are being multiplied together. So because of the rules of multiplication, I can reorganize things because order doesn't matter. So I'm going to rewrite this. It's 4.7 times 22.02 .02 times 10 times 100. Well, What's 10 times 100? It's 1,000. So when I multiply 47 times 2202, I get an answer that is 1,000 times too big. Because when I took out those decimal points, I multiplied this by 10 and I multiplied this by 100, which means my answer got 1,000 times too big. So my final answer, when I put the decimal points back in, has to be a, then 1,000 times smaller. So if... 103494 is a thousand times too big, I have to divide by 
1,000. Well, what happens when I do that? I move the decimal point back one, two, three spaces. So it's all the same thing. Counting the decimal points, looking at the fraction denominators, um, thinking about this in terms of, well, how many times bigger is my answer? It all is the same thing. When we multiply with decimals, we're moving out the decimal points, and those decimal points have to get put back in. So when we put the decimal point back in, we are just dividing out what we, what we put in to begin with to make our life easier. All right. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.